Hey church, as we are bringing Romans to a close here in, in chapter 16, a few quick observations for you. Uh, the first being in these first 15 verses of the chapter, kind of asking like, what's going on here with these personal greetings? And as you read through the greetings and read through this list of names and the, the brief comments that Paul makes on each of them, I'm just encouraged in, in recognizing that these individuals are by and large lost to history. They, they're lost to history. We don't know the details of their lives, but they're known to God. Right. They are, are lost to history, but known to God. And I just find an encouragement in that to plod on in faithful insignificance. Right. Just faithful insignificance. It's not about being known. It's not about followers and likes and retweets and, and all of that, but just plodding on in faithfulness for the sake of the name, for the sake of the name of Jesus. That's what they clearly we're doing in the, the partnership in the gospel that they enjoyed with the Apostle Paul. So friend, would you plod on in faithful insignificance? In, in the second, as we do that, uh, and as we continue to read in verses 17 uh, and following there, as Paul's talking about divisions, may our plotting be marked by a watchfulness uh, against such divisions. Because, Paul is saying that such divisions are contrary to the person of Christ. They're contrary to the gospel. Right? He says that such people who cause these divisions, who, who teach and, uh, and by virtue of the obstacles that they put in place, things that are contrary to the gospel, these people do not serve our Lord Jesus. No, Instead, they're, they're serving their, their own selfish desire. So may we be not like these people, but those are the, the first 15 verses. Those of plotting insignificance, not seeking to satisfy our own deceptive hearts, but doing what is good and right. And, and so the exhortation here is just, especially in the next weeks and, and months, as we hopefully are re-engaging in, in social interaction, and God willing, as we get to meet together as a church on, on Sunday mornings again, just be on guard for these kinds of divisions. All right, let, let's serve one another and being watchful that we don't set up obstacles that are contrary to the doctrine of the gospel of Christ, but that, that we would seek to love and serve one another uh, with the various uh, parameters that we put in place. And uh, may we just consider the other person more significant than ourselves, especially here in these coming weeks. And may we persevere because of what Paul says in verse 20. Look at this. Verse 20, he says uh, to the, the church, uh, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. I just find that remarkable for two things there. That this is going to happen soon. It can feel like it's never going to happen. That we're just going to be plotting on without end. But soon Satan will be crushed. And it's significant here that Paul says under our feet. Because of our uh, the nature of our union with Christ, Satan will be crushed under our feet. Indeed, we will be more than conquerors. So take hope uh, of the sure victory that is ours in Christ that will be accomplished as God does it. Right? And, and let me just conclude here in uh, saying this doxology over you as you go on uh, with your day here from the, the end of Romans 16. Paul writes, now to him who is able to strengthen you according to the, according to the gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed. And through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen.